Hi. Hi, Shalia. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Uh, Eddie Pels with AP. Congratulations. I, we heard you talking a little bit, but what about just the physical toll that it took for you to get from, I think, what was the C-section to holding your baby on the track line? Yeah, it was definitely a lot of, physically it was very hard. Yeah. Oh, it's not on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello? There you go. So yeah, it was definitely harder. I remember um, when I was having my son, I was actually trying to have him naturally, but it wasn't happening and you know, I was really scared when I had to do a C-section and I was out for 10 weeks and then unable to lift weights on my back. So I was doing a lot of hand weights and stuff like that. So it was definitely a long journey physically being um, coming back from having my, my son and you know mentally it was even harder because you know you're 30, you're having a baby females are running fast, you worry about if you're gonna come back. But you know for me I really just you know really worked hard. Larry? Shellyanne, congratulations. Thank you. Um, it's off. You gotta press that lovely little red button every time you talk. <laughs> they're, they're trying to mess with you. Um, so I really enjoyed your semi time. Uh, you seem to like to tell a message in the semis. You just kind of blast it. You look very, very relaxed. Tell us how you felt in the semi and tell us how you felt in the first. Um, honestly, I was tired in both because I actually didn't get to sleep last night. Weird for me. Um, I spent. I actually got some sleep about 4 a.m. this morning, and you know I was just trying to make sure I ran the rounds as best as I could and get to the finals. You know, I for me, you know, I'm, I'm an experienced athlete, and I just did what I needed to do tonight. Two Olympic titles and now four world titles. Do you view yourself as the greatest country to be the runner in history? Um, honestly, I'm one of those athletes that don't get too caught up in the, uh, you know, all of those stuff. I'm more working hard and trying to run fast and winning titles. And you know, I've heard it earlier. And I feel good. I guess about you know being or I guess getting. <coughs> <laughs> I just feel good and for me I'm just excited that I was able to come out here and put on a show. Question to Bob. You guys had two hours between semi and the final. How that helped? And also a question to Chilean. How many weeks did you win? <laughs> well, um, I was actually planning on changing my game. Yes, yeah, so I was actually planning on changing my hair each race. <laughs> I'm not running in 200, so I guess you won't get to see the next color. <laughs> but I'm running the relay, so hopefully I'll bring one of the relays. Um, for me, uh, the two hours were, it was okay because by the time I actually walked around, it was time to get back into the warm up, which you know, it's very hard because you wanted that little time to, to regroup, but you know, it's part of athletics. There are different things that happen different year at the championship. So you just have to adjust and, you know, just get ready to to oh, In French or English? English and try. So, the powers was for me okay, but, you know, after the semifinal, I think some things, my knees, so I was a little bit boring. Um, I saw my physio and do an amazing job. Then I come and I try to to catch up. <laughs> and then my niece say, "Oh, you cannot." <laughs> but I'm just happy. Yeah. Um, Shelly, I, I think I heard you say that. When you found out you were pregnant, that there were some people who said, "Well, you know, it's been nice." Um, how did you respond to that? Um, I just didn't listen. You know, I'm, I'm one of those persons I don't read too much. You know, like today, before I ran um, the C 
semi-finals, I stayed off my phone. You know, my friends were messaging me, I just didn't respond to that, actually I'm finished. So when I heard persons who, you know, said I should call it, you know, in my career, yeah, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And I knew how I felt, and I knew I wasn't ready to go, and I knew I had something left to, to, to do. And for me, I just kept focused on the goal and the dream, and I never lost focus of the target. One question to the lady in the back. My name is Chibo Kunatiglam, AIPS Media. This question is for Shelly. Now, we saw you do a kind of lack of honor with your child, Zion, and I want to ask, how significant was this win in terms of going for a maternity break and returning afterwards and coming off to win a fourth world title? Yeah, it's definitely one of those uh, moments that I'm really proud of. Because, you know, for athletics and women in athletics, it's very hard to take a break and to come back, you know, to, to sprinting. And I remember in 2018, when I was getting back into the blocks, I didn't have enough power. I was still struggling and getting my start together. I had a lot of time when, you know, I was just stressed out about getting my start and the 30 meters. It took a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice. So having Zion being able to witness tonight is definitely a moment that I'll cherish because he reminded me of how much I had to work and how hard I had to fight, especially as women when you know the world believes that you know having a baby you should wait until you're finished. But you know, got other plans. Hi, my name is Shelly, uh, tonight we had another mother having um, get a gold medal, Alison Felix, and we know this year she was fighting for equal rights, she had her issues with her sponsorship, she had her contract reduced. Did you go through something similar with her sponsorship after you got pregnant? Um, unfortunately, I wish not to comment on that issue right now. Okay, let's give one question to the front row of the gentleman here. You're in trouble from Athletics Weekly. Shelly Ann, um, just want to ask you about uh, Dina Asher Smith and what you think she might be capable of. Right? Oh, well, I don't know what she, but I can't tell you what she's capable of. I think that's a question for her, but you know, for me, being able to compete with uh, Marie and Dina, who continues to, you know, to push. And it's just a, a remarkable feeling to be able to line up against women who continue to just fight each time we get to the line. And that can only be good for the sport. You know, Dina actually had a PB, I think, in, the, in that race, and a national record. So that's awesome. And I think she'll definitely inspire a lot of, you know, athletes in Great Britain to, you know, to know that, you know, you don't have to come from the US or Jamaica. You can come from somewhere else and still, you know, bring virus. One question of the gentleman on the second row. Yeah, there's only a thousand people or so in the stadium when the race took place. It was probably one of the lowest attendances for a women's hockey in the final. How disappointing is that? And um, how's the lack of atmosphere been to all the athletes involved? Well, I did. Yeah, so I, I actually did go Je suis 
things about my mom, <coughs> my country, and all of my people who support me. Then I'm just praying, God, give me power to finish my race. So I'm just focusing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. For me, I was glad that I actually saw the main 100 and all that lights and that darkness. I was like, wow. You know. So I was trying not to get flustered. My coach was actually said to me. Do not get too flustered when the lights come on, just stay focused, deep really that like focus on, you know, just executing. And for me, I was just thinking that, okay, the start, me the start and then we're in business. And this is from me, Jose. Uh, follow you on Instagram a little bit and I enjoy your answers to young athletes. Do you see yourself as a role model for women athletes? In Africa, I know you talk a lot about training and spinning. Slow? Okay. Too much espresso. Uh, the, uh, I have followed you on social media, and you spend a lot of time speaking to athletes who send you notes about running, about fashion and things. Do you see yourself as a role model for athletes in, in Africa? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, because you know, um, everybody knows my story. Uh, I, I start <laughs> <laughs> when everybody knows me. I was, oh, I think, 26 or 27 years. So everybody's thinking that I was not able to be in the top of my phone because I didn't start like a junior. Then I start. Um, believe in myself and I pray too much, you know, and what I want is to make African people proud and I think if I want to make African people proud, I have to make something different and I think I tell them, okay, I'm going to train in Africa and I think I'm the only one who trained in Africa, yeah, so when they see that, they say, okay, you train in Africa and you are one of the best in the world, so we can be like you. You are really a role model. So, what's your secret? And when I saw too many uh, messages from young people, I'm like, okay, I know why God put me in that side because He wants me to inspire some people on the other side to believe in themselves. Yeah. I'm going to try to make you champions. Um, my question is for Mary Jose. Um, was there any point in the season that you thought you wouldn't be able to get this medal? Like after the African Games, I think you finished the 200 with a slight injury. Um, and then also, in the last world, you won double silver. Are you going to double at these championships as well? I hope I will see you by this this night. But you know, uh, my season was not the best season for me because you know I was ready and I see a problem in my feet, so I have to stop my season, uh, my training for two weeks, go to train myself and come back. And then when I was ready, <laughs> I have a problem again. So all my season was like my body was not responsive, so I was like not only on my mind, my coach is there again. <laughs> He can say that for me because I was not really good on my mind, but you know when you are good on prayer, you know what God do and that's for you, you are like, okay, I'm going to see what I can do there. So when I come there and from the first eight, I do 1085 easy, I was like, wow, God, you are awesome. So I know that I was ready. And then at the final, what happened, what happened, my knees went through, but I'm okay for that. And for, for, for things you, you does As you say, we have and since you finished university, can you just comment on how much that has changed your kind of your training and your daily lifestyle? And secondly, just uh, away from athletics, what what are your main interests that you like to do away from the track? And I hear your particular interest in music. Can you comment on that as well? Well, I'm still pretty studious, like, I love learning about things, I like taking mini courses, and I read a lot of kind of boring things, but, um, yeah, my life's changed a lot since finishing uni, I'm able to kind of, like, train like a pro athlete, which I'm kind of seeing is paying for me, and I'm really, really happy, I can train at different times.
exams in a day with more intensity and I uh, don't have like an exam period to <laughs> battle through, so it's great. And just the other questions, just what you do inside. Of oh yeah, I said I'm still watching your side read and stuff, but just, yeah, still spend a lot of time with like my friends and this is just so much, sorry. I still go to this, so I read a lot, but um, just normal people stuff, like spending time with my friends, watching Netflix, watching make off, boring things. <laughs> the gentleman here. So my question is for Sherry and Fraser Price. Uh, not the week, Sherry. Uh, <laughs> 1071, um, just shy of your personal best national record. Um, how close do you think you are breaking that record? Um, you know, I think I'm just like at the door and it will open, but you know, I believe that it's definitely going to come. And tonight, after doing what I did and you know, going back home to put in some work for 2020, I'm hoping that somewhere along the line it will definitely come up tonight. I'm just really grateful to be able to dip below 10 years and actually go close to my personal best. So I'm excited about that. Actually, I know this is not a difficult question for you, but um, see you later for tonight when 1071 and then I looked at the start list for 200 years and didn't see your name. Can you tell us um, what happened there? Yeah, well, my coach um, made a decision that I won't be doing the 200 because he believes that I'm not really back as yet and he didn't want to push push me too much. You know, he believes that you know we can definitely do the double for 2020. And you know, it's just a decision that I just have to trust. And uh, he's a coach, so I'm just listening to his advice. Next question. Dina, congratulations on your... Um, two questions. First of all, you never tell us what your expectations are before a race, so where did your time and finishing place sort of stand compared to what you were hoping for? And secondly, can you confirm you were watching Great British Bake Off to prepare for the final? I wouldn't call it prep, but I definitely... Oh, sorry, I think I said that was that. I wouldn't call it prep, but I was definitely watching Bake Off today. Um, I love Bake Off, huge Bake Off fan. And um, somebody talked to me about BPMs. I'm not too techie, but I got one, so I was starting, I was catching up on all the bake off I've missed, I was over the moon, had a great day. But um, yeah, I, I never really release my expectations before I go into championships, mainly just to control the, the inevitable service that, that comes along with that. But yeah, I achieved my goal, I achieved my goal this championships, I wanted to come away, come away with a medal, a medal in um, the 100 meters. And, I was so happy to achieve that because obviously, as I said last year, um, the European goal is great, but um, last year I was in great shape, ran some great times, but I didn't think racing-wise that I was quite there yet to, in, like, in the top three in the world. And going towards the Tokyo Olympics, that's obviously where I want to be. So last year, my coach and I set a goal we just to come away with a medal in the 100 meters at this championships, which was a big ask for me, given that I've never run 100 meters on a world senior stage before. So um, a lot of hard work, a lot of training, and a lot of race prep went into that. Obviously, doing a lot of um, races on the Diamond League circuit this year. So really happy to have achieved my goal. Well done for the times. Um, well done. Um, do you get to follow on from that really? Do you still consider yourself really a two hundred meter runner? Um, just how much does this whet the appetite for the rest of this week and for next year? Okay. Um, I mean, I I never really myself as a 200 meter runner simply because I'm never one to, to put all my eggs in, in one basket. I mean, I think I've been doing 200 mainly at championships over the years, mainly because I've been coming into it. Either it was my first championship or I've been kind of injured, so I picked one that I was experienced over. But um, it's always been my aim in the future to double up and hopefully do interesting things for me that is going on. But um, yeah, I mean, the rest of the week looks exciting, but obviously we've all got to get back, sleep, recover, and make sure that we're ready for them. The gentleman here, yes. uh, on the ground the Telegraph, um, just, in 36, it had been 36 years, I think, since um, since British female sprinter won a won a global medal. I mean, did did you um, did that occur in your in your thinking beforehand at all? And I, I just wondered, what is it about that you think that makes you peak for the for the biggest occasions? Uh, mainly because it's our job to peak for the biggest occasions. I mean, like, we've trained to run fast in the Games World Championships. We all want to run our 
has the best times our class has ever um, on the big global stage, so that's why I wanted to run class here today. And um, I didn't really think about it. I'm not very satty that I can't tell you any of these feelings, any of these titles, like I'm just not um, into kind of getting overthinking everything and thinking about the best things and things. Like that's not something that I want to be carrying with me when I run. So to hear that afterwards, it means a lot and it's great, but I honestly had no idea <laughs> when I was running. I was just focusing on what I had to do in the race. Two last questions before we wrap it up. I have a question, sorry, Jonathan Gould here from Let's Run Buffalo. Question for Dina. Uh, I asked Shelley Payne for this earlier and asked you, do you think she is the best ever in the 100 meters? Well, I can't say no, she's sitting right next to me. <laughs> what would you do if I said no? Exactly, no, no, um, she's absolutely fantastic. And as I said, I'm not a stato, but um, she certainly got to be up there at the top of my head. I mean, her BBs are clearly amazing. She's got a silver board one today. Uh, four four times for the for Olympic title, so she's um, incredibly experienced and definitely one of the legends and icons of our sport, so definitely. But you can't ask, like, what can I say? How should I say no? <laughs> like, that's just causing this tension that doesn't exist. No, I'm joking. Larry, it was from Long Run. Congratulations on the national record in the race. So, not from the stats place, but just tell us how you felt. With the race today, were you happy with it? Did, uh, what memory do you have from it, or was it just so quick? Um, no, it wasn't so quick. All the races for me are quite slow. I wasn't particularly happy with how I ran my race today, if I'm being completely honest. I'm a perfectionist, but I always want to put my best foot forward. Um, I was happy with it in the context of a World Champs final and coming out with my fastest time ever. But there are little bits that I could have done a bit differently, but at the same time, it's how you execute in a World Champs final. And I was really happy that that still resulted in a good time for me. Thank you. So, so, thank you very much.